We have to figure out what's going on first. The iceberg's falling off and drought and deaths of thousands of animals. It is a doomsday scenario that there's absolutely no scientific evidence for. To push to lower CO2 levels is in fact endangering the planet and life on it much more than any increase in CO2. From the typical environmentalist perspective, the best environment is nature untouched by human hands. That's not a biblical understanding at all. It's not enough simply to listen to the propaganda and believe it. We have to actually reason through it. Coral Ridge Ministries and Answers in Genesis present Global Warming, a scientific and biblical expose of climate change. Global warming is a uh, popular phenomenon now because of the expressions of disaster that tend to come along with the story. And if you can show a story that has uh, big icebergs falling off and drought and deaths of thousands of animals and so on, well that's going to get the media's attention, and certainly people's attention. But with all the doomsday scenarios, what do scientists really know about global warming? The simple answer on what is global warming is to say that the Earth's temperature has risen in the past 150 years. We've been able to measure that with thermometers. There isn't anybody I know that doesn't agree that we are unusually warm right now. But that's where the agreement among scientists ends. Once you understand that the temperature is rising, the question is, well, why? And that is where uh, a number of issues come to bear and opinions, because we cannot know for certain. At this point, I think the, uh, the research is too preliminary for us to say definitively what is causing global warming, even though I think it's fairly well established that it's happening. Many of the measurements we have today with satellite and with um, surface temperature data on the ocean, these are only 30 years old. Even the measurements of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, direct measurements only go back to 1958. So that's why it's only been in just in the last few years that we've been able to get measurements, direct measurements, that lead us to have more confidence there has been some change in temperature in the atmosphere. As land use changes, climate changes too. If you build a city, the temperatures tend to go up. And so in a lot of places it looks like we're seeing global warming in the urban areas, and yet in rural areas there's not much at all. So this has been a big problem. But with the, with the satellites measuring temperatures above the Earth's surface, it's, it's really getting an unbiased, un, unfettered by, by land use change temperature trend. And now we have uh, about 30 years of data, and, uh, and, it's, and it's very interesting and very valuable data. This layer of atmosphere... The most widely publicized theory and the view presented in Al Gore's Oscar-winning documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, is that greenhouse gases are largely to blame for the warming. Greenhouse gases are gases that absorb energy in a certain part of the spectrum that uh, keeps thermal or heat energy in the atmosphere. I think the simplest way to think about this is that if you were in a desert at night, you find that it gets very cold. If you're in the southeastern United States at night, say Florida or Alabama or somewhere, you'll find that the nighttime temperatures in the summer stay warm. Well, water vapor or humidity in the southeast is a greenhouse gas that keeps the heat in and doesn't allow it to escape at night. Sunlight comes in, warms the earth, but what most people don't realize is that for all of that sunlight coming in, there has to be an equal amount of infrared heat energy going back out to outer space. Now the climate modelers claim that there's this fragile balance between the incoming sunlight and the outgoing infrared and that when we add the CO2, we're upsetting that delicate balance. CO2, or carbon dioxide, is the greenhouse gas that grabs most of the headlines. They make it sound like it's that radiation balance that determines what the temperature of the Earth is, but I think that's the wrong way to look at it. I think that it's the sunlight coming in that determines how warm things are going to get. Weather creates a greenhouse effect, which is mostly water vapor and clouds, and in other words, the weather has control over the greenhouse effect, and if we add CO2, I think the weather is going to change slightly in order to reduce the warming from that extra CO2.
Some people say that CO2 has a dominant effect on the Earth's climate. And the models tend to make you believe that because they leave out all the other variables that I think really matter. We have to figure out what's going on first. If it were as simple as excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is we, we know is real, is causing the Earth to warm up, then the data would support that. It doesn't. The great question is how much, if at all, does that account for the warming that we have seen in recent years? And the best scientific evidence that I see indicates that it is a very tiny proportion of the total cause, if in fact it can even be uh, viewed as a part of the cause at all. The oceans contain much more carbon dioxide than the atmosphere does. And if the temperature, the warming occurs and it warms the ocean, it releases carbon dioxide, very much like a, a bottle of soda pop. When it's warm, it fizzes very easily. So the ocean will release carbon dioxide when it's warmer. That in turn explains the increase in carbon dioxide with the increase in temperature. But the temperature leads the carbon dioxide change. can't look out and develop an instrument that says this tells me why the temperature is changing. Some people think all that you see in terms of global warming is caused by humans and the greenhouse gases we uh, emit because of energy production. Others say it's completely naturally induced like changes in the solar input from the sun or various ways in which the weather um, fluctuates due to natural changes in the ocean circulation or wind systems and so on like that. The bottom line is that, contrary to popular reports, not all scientists agree that global warming is man-made. I would say that the mainstream view of global warming is, yes, we are unusually warm right now, and most of it is probably due to mankind. Now, you'll hear that there's a consensus of scientists that believe this. It turns out that there are very few scientists in the world that know enough about the whole problem to actually be able to cast judgment on this. So that if you hear that a thousand scientists agree that global warming is due to mankind, chances are only 10 of that thousand actually know enough about the problem to cast any judgment on the issue at all. We don't really know for certain what's causing global warming. We know that it's happening. There is a evidence to suggest that the Earth's temperature has gone up a bit. And there are many mechanisms that have been proposed. And of course, the one that I'm, I'm most interested in as an astronomer would be the astronomical aspects of that, namely the influence of the sun. We, we do know that the sun's overall intensity uh, is greater when there are more sunspots. That's something that's been measured. So that, uh, that's, that's definitive. But we don't know for certain if that's what's causing the increased uh, temperatures on Earth. Al Gore uh, says in his uh, Inconvenient Truth that there's a consensus. And other scientists in the media say there's a consensus, but they're getting this from the United Nations uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Uh, IPCC is the acronym for it. And they claim that there's a consensus of 2,500 scientists that now man is causing most, if not all, the global warming. That's the claim consensus. But there isn't a consensus because there's a lot of meteorologists and atmospheric scientists and, in, and environmentalists that say that we believe that natural processes are a significant part of the global warming. Aside from the causes of warming, the effects of global warming are also up for debate. As far as Al Gore's movie goes, uh, An Inconvenient Truth, I think there was a lot of misrepresentation and half-truths in that movie. He showed a lot of dramatic footage of different things going on, uh, you know, ice crashing off of glaciers into the ocean, and droughts, and floods, and, and of course what he didn't mention was everything he showed in the movie happens naturally. The concern that many scientists have is that whether you have an ice age or whether you have warming, major warming, it's going to cause droughts and doom and gloom. But there are benefits. For example, in the northern parts of the United States and in Canada, if you have global warming, you're going to have longer growing seasons up there and people will be able to live up there. It will be warmer to the south and there may be some places of drought, but we have droughts today. So it's not a major 
major effect. Well, a lot of people, when they hear about global warming, they have this uh, doom and gloom mentality that it's going to just be a disaster and, and wipe out all life on Earth. And really, we, we need to consider that actually global warming may have a number of positive benefits uh, as well. And now, cer now certainly it'll have some negative consequences, but we need to consider the fact that, for example, human lives will probably be saved as a result of global warming because, after all, more people die of exposure to cold than they do exposure to heat. 